Dear colleagues, thanks for coming to this session. I'm sorry for not being able to deliver this presentation in person. LNG has been a hot topic in the last several years. As you know, there are a lot of LNG plants built all over the world with different technologies. This presentation particularly focuses on Preco LNG process, which was patented by Blankovich. Many research and studies are conducted about this simple yet effective LNG cycle. In this presentation, I will try to improve the performance of an existing LNG plant from a different angle through dynamic simulation. I am a professional mechanical engineer and a professional chemical engineer as well. I started my career at Early Kid as a process engineer after graduation in 2002, majoring in refrigeration and cryogenics. In 2009, I joined TES Energy, where I designed three turbine image healing plants for three Australian LNG projects. About two years ago, I joined dual processing, working primarily on modular gas processing and condensate stabilization plants. I have one patent application and also spoke at different conferences such as, such as OSMENTEC, OSME, GPA, and PowerGene. I also would like to emphasize that Preco process was patented by Black & Veatch. I do not work for Black & Veatch, nor this paper is sponsored by BNV. I'm not affiliated with Black & Veatch by any means. In addition, this paper is for academic research purpose only. Here is the agenda for today's presentation. In the first section, I will have a quick introduction about the Preco LNG process. Then I explain in greater details about modeling the Preco process in a dynamic simulator, VMG SIM. In the second section, I will explain the two major control loops in the Preco process. One is the LNG temperature loop. The other one is the compressor suction control. In the third section, I will set up a challenge to liquefy extra 20% LNG without additional capital investment. The problem with status quo will be explained and the solution will be provided. Finally, I will make a summary for all the key information in the slides so that you can take away. In the early 70s, Black and Veatch developed the Preco single mixed refrigerant process for LNG using a cost-effective design that covers a broad range of LNG plant capacities. In addition to baseload LNG supply units, Preco LNG process technology is ideal for producing LNG for peak shaving, vehicle fuel supply, and gas distribution systems. Preco offers the lowest capital cost of all competing technologies and a simplified control system. The patented process allows for rapid startup and shutdown and is proven in reliable operations with reduced personnel requirements. By the way, this introduction is extracted from BNV website. Here is the Preco process flow diagram. The water-free, CO2-free gas enters the main heat exchanger in which it is cooled to an intermediate temperature for NGL removal. The liquefied natural gas is sent to a uh, storage. The mixed refrigerant at the compressor discharge is first introduced into the main heat exchanger where it is liquefied. After throttling in the JT valve, it is reheated back in the main heat exchanger and then feed into the suction drum. The vapor is compressed in the first section of the compressor and then cooled in a cooler. The vapor outlet of the interstage drum is further compressed in the second section of the compressor while the liquid directly pumped to the second, second section discharge. After it is cooled, the vapor from the discharge drum is reintroduced to the metal changer and the liquid too, thus it forms a closed refrigeration loop.
After talking about the process flow diagram, let us take a look what it looks like in a process simulator. I use VMG Sim for this application. As you can see, this looks pretty the same as the process flow diagram extracted from PNV website. The only difference is the NGL remover process, which is modeled here. In addition, four major control loops are also added to properly control the plant. The main heat exchanger is modeled as a plate fin type heat exchanger. The total length is 40 feet with a width of 3.3 feet. There are a total of 600 layers, with each stream has about 200 layers. We might need to have several cores for the heat exchanger. Each layer has its own layer spacing and fin spacing. To speed up the calculation, the heat transfer coefficient is not calculated. Instead, it is assumed to be a fixed value taken from another heat transfer software. To better model the overall cycle performance, the compressor curves are input to the dynamic simulator as well. The x-axis is the actual volume flow, and the y-axis is the head. Different curves represent the performance at a different RPM. If the compressor guidelines are adjustable, the curves can be input to the simulator as well. Now we move to the process control of the pre process. Two major control loops will be particularly discussed. The first one is the refrigerant flow and LNG temperature control, and the second one is the compressor suction control. Here is the complete process control. Four control loops are modeled here. The TC1 is used to control the compressor suction. TC2 is used to control the LNG outlet temperature. LC1 and LC2 are used to control the liquid level in the interstate drum and discharge drum. What's interesting about this control is that there is no compressor discharge control. The compressor discharge pressure is self-balanced out in this cycle. In addition, there might be two more controllers to control the outlet temperature of these two coolers. Now we specifically talk about the LNG outlet temperature. It is quite intuitive to adjust the mixed refrigerant flow to control the LNG outlet temperature by manipulating either the compressor speed or guidelines. In this example, we will manipulate the compressor speed to control LNG outlet temperature. When it comes to compressor suction control, it is quite counterintuitive. Common sense tells us to control the compressor suction pressure by manipulating the control valve, like on the left. However, the problem is the operator might specify the wrong suction pressure set point, which may lead to a liquid carryover to the compressor. A better way to control the compressor suction is to control the suction superheat instead of pressure, like on the right. After we talk about the process control, we dive into the optimization of an existing preco LNG plant. A preco LNG plant was designed with a capacity of about 1 million metric ton per year. It has a compressor suction superheat of 40 Fahrenheit. Do you think the plant is able to liquefy extra 20% flow? This is a quite busy strip chart. The x-axis is time in seconds, and there are five y-axis to show five variables. The pink one is the compressor speed. The red one is the power consumption. The blue one is the LNG temperature. 
the black one is LNG mass flow rate, and the green one is the superheat temperature. From the beginning, the plant is running very stable at 280,000 pound per hour LNG. At time 2,000 seconds, the LNG mass flow rate is increased to 336,000 pounds per hour by 20%. There is quite a some fluctuate at the time of change. Please do not do this on a real plant. At time 8,000 seconds, the plant is restabilized. The compressor speed is increased to its maximum of 3,600 RPM. Power consumption increased quite a bit to 35.2 thousand horsepower. The superheat remains at 40 Fahrenheit. Look at the LNG temperature. Instead of being negative 250 Fahrenheit, now it is negative 236 Fahrenheit. With the higher LNG temperature, it means there will be more flash in the storage. So, Houston, we have a problem. It seems the plant is not able to liquefy 20% extra LNG. What can we do? Luckily, where there's a will, there's a way. We can surely do it, since the compressor suction superheat is not directly related to the LNG outlet temperature. We can try to optimize this variable. How about we drop the superheat from 40 Fahrenheit to 20 Fahrenheit? A video was created to help you better understand how dynamic simulation works. At time 8,000 seconds, the superheat set point is changed to 20 Fahrenheit instead of 40 Fahrenheit. Process control starts to take action to accommodate this new change. Compressor speed, LNG outlet temperature, and power consumption are all updating its values. You just watch this video in 30 seconds. But in reality, it takes several hours. Now we take a closer look at the strip chart. At time 8,000 seconds, the superheat set point is changed to 20 Fahrenheit. Please notice the superheat almost reaches 0 Fahrenheit. So in real plant, please change the set point slowly. After a long waiting of several hours, the plant is finally stable. Compressor speed drops to about 3200 RPM. The LNG temperature is back to negative 250 Fahrenheit. Look at the power consumption. It drops to 32.6 thousand horsepower instead of 35.2 thousand horsepower. This is about 7% energy saving, yet the product specification is still met. So, this seems to be a perfect solution. The LNG is chilled to lower temperature with less power consumption simply by reducing the compressor suction superheat. We now come to the final conclusion. Several key points I would like you to take away. For a typical preco LNG process, please do not control the first stage suction pressure. Instead, Control the suction superheat by manipulating the pressure throttling valve. There might be room for you to further optimize your pre-cool energy plant by optimizing superheat, but please make sure there will be no liquid carryover to the compressor. Again, I'm sorry for not being able to take your questions or comments in person. Please email me through gchen at guofuchen.com. Thanks for your attention.